BBC Learning English dot com presents Talk About English, a series of radio features that support your English language studies. It's time for academic listening, a series for students at English speaking universities. Join Susan Fern and members of the World Service Class of 2001 as they continue to discuss the skills and techniques needed for listening to and understanding a lecture. And that brings me to the end of this series of lectures on the plays of Shakespeare.、Uh, to end the session, has anyone any questions on today's lecture or the series as a whole? Yes, Mohammed. We focused on the important role of the introduction and the main body of a lecture. Now we turn our attention to the content and function of the final section of a lecture, the conclusion. In the conclusion of their lecture, the lecturer is going to be summing up, going through the main points, indicating how important various pieces of evidence are. Simon Williams teaches English in the Language Centre at University College London. And a good lecturer is going to indicate where students should go next, both in their thinking and maybe in their activities, in in what they're going to read up on in the library. Maybe if they're going to take that topic、uh, as an essay topic, perhaps. The lecture might also talk about what they weren't able to do in that fifty minutes or so, what they've had to leave out, and therefore what the students can go away and and discover for themselves if they're interested. The concluding section of a lecture. Acts as a summary of the main points. It's a final chance to make sure you've made a note of what the lecturer considers the most important things to remember. It might also give you clues about what you can do or study next. But how do you know when a lecturer has reached their conclusion? Well, as these World Service class members point out, with practice it becomes quite easy to spot the signposts and marker phrases that guide you through. Most of the time, when the lecture is finishing, the in conclusion or these sort of markers are going to appear, or even summarizing things like that. You can understand、um, when it is the end of the introduction, when it's the end of the main point, and when the conclusion is coming. He would signal what, when he's going to finish speaking、um, by by introducing a summary. He might use a phrase like, "Well, in conclusion." And then what he would normally do, and to help you again, if you miss the, f- the main points in the body of the lecture,、uh, he will repeat in his summary what the main points were again. All of these features of organisation should help you to follow a lecture. We've discovered during these programmes that there are several things you can do to help you understand lectures. We've suggested that it's important to prepare before the lecture. By looking at the course outline and learning specialist vocabulary, for example, and we've said that thinking about the purpose of a lecture can help you know where to focus attention. We've also offered clues about how lecturers organise their material and highlight the main points. It should be clear by now that listening to lectures is a busy task. It's not just the lecturer who's doing all the work, and as Simon Williams suggests. There's a speaking role for students as well. There might be a question and answer session at that stage, and lecturers will be delighted if people ask questions that, that demonstrate they've been listening to the lecture, that they're interested in the topic. Because if the lecturer has been interested enough to deliver something on a particular subject, I guess that means that they've got a genuine interest, and they'll be delighted that students return that interest and share in it. It means that the lecture has been successful in stimulating and motivating the students. Many speakers use the final moments of their lecture to answer questions from the audience. This is a chance to show that you've been interested in the topic, and also to make sure that you've understood properly. Simon Williams again. It's sometimes difficult to know the sort of questions that are welcome. So knowing when to ask questions and what sort of questions to ask. Is、uh, an important skill to develop. It's always a good idea to ask questions, though, because first of all, it helps you to clarify things in your mind in order to get the question ready. So, from that point of view, it's helping to digest the information and to put it in some kind of order. And secondly, it shows the lecturer that、uh, they've managed, they've succeeded in getting across information and in stimulating the students. In fact, Simon Williams believes that thinking of questions before the lecture is a useful and important way to prepare. 
Preparing questions in advance is, is a really useful activity because it's going to focus the student's mind on what to listen out for in the lecture. And any that don't get answered in the, in the body of the lecture can come up at that point. They can ask the lecturer to fill in the gaps. Knowing what to ask your lecturer is one thing, but it can be more difficult to know when to ask. Here's some advice from one of our World Service class members. When it's a general lecture, when you have many other students, if you think it's very important the thing that he's saying, and you are, you are, think, uh, you are thinking that you are losing something. Uh, I, I ask. I ask. But if I think it's a joke or something not important, I let it pass. Yeah. In another uh, situation, I can ask a, a classmate as well. Another problem that I think is that normally people who arrive the first time to a lecture sometimes are too shy to ask. But I ask if it's necessary, yes, I ask. Asking questions is not the only way to participate. Being an active learner is, is tremendously important. You need to know why you're doing something. You need to have a purpose. For example, you'd never write a letter of complaint and, and not say somewhere in the letter what you want done, what, what you want to happen as, as a result of your letter. In the same way, when you're studying, it's a good idea to know what you'd like to get at the end of it. According to Simon Williams, good students are active learners. They have a purpose. They know what they want to achieve. And it's the same whether they're reading an academic text or attending a lecture. It's also important to be what Simon Williams calls a critical listener. The critical student might always think of two questions as they're reading a text or listening to a, a lecture. Why is the person saying this particular thing at this moment? Where does it fit into the overall structure? And so what? What's important about it? What does it mean? The two questions, why this now and so what, help in, in two ways. The why this now uh, is a kind of signpost uh, telling you where you are on the journey through the, the lecture or through the book even, if you're reading. Knowing where you are can be very reassuring. People tend to get nervous if they feel a bit lost. And secondly, the, the so what question shows you how relatively significant that particular point is, whether perhaps it's uh, just an aside that the lecturer might make to, to help people understand uh, a more important point, or whether it's crucial to, to the argument that they're making, to the, the point of the talk. During these programmes, we've described an ideal situation where speakers deliver clear, well-organised lectures. Now, as many of you will know, reality isn't always like this. At the beginning, during lectures, it was sometimes difficult because you find you get different visiting lecturers and some of them might be good journalists, since I'm doing journalism. We always looked at them and after the class I... He's a good journalist, but he's not a speaker. Or he might be a good journalist, but he's not a, a good lecturer. The first time we spend most of our time sleeping in class. <laughs> well, if that's a situation you recognised, here are some practical suggestions that might help. First, try sitting near the front of the lecture hall. If the lecturer can see your face, they might notice that you're looking puzzled or confused and they might offer further explanation or examples. When the lecturer is speaking, um, they will look at the audience and uh, we can look at them as well. Then it's sort of, there is a communication there. It's not just the communication, uh, the non-verbal communication, like just uh, the eye contact and things like that. But um, the intonation, the pause and uh, the, some colloquial things which can help. Never sit at the back of a hall. It's warm, it's dark, it's very tempting to start passing notes to people and to cut off from the, the main activity. So sit in the middle or towards the front where you can get into some kind of interaction, even if it's just nodding or looking bored. At least you're giving some kind of feedback to the speaker. A second piece of advice is to team up with other students. 
Many people find that this is a good way to cope with a lecturer who delivers a lot of information. One of you can take notes, while the other copies a diagram off the board, for example. And you can check understanding by comparing your notes after the lecture. Another way of coping with the difficulty of um, studying in a second or further language might be to team up with the native speaker. So there are things that very often two people can do that will help each other get much more out of something. So for the language learner, it might be uh, help with uh, understanding missing bits of, of lectures. And uh, for the the native speaker, it might be an area of expertise that uh, the language learner is familiar with. In, in that kind of relationship, it's, uh, it's a two-way exchange of information, different kinds of information. Finally, if you still find you're having problems understanding a particular speaker, Simon Williams suggests the best thing to do is to have a quiet word with them after the session. If you feel that your lecturer hasn't been such a good lecturer and, has, and the whole thing's been a bit disappointing or you, you haven't understood as much as you'd like, then go up to the lecturer, talk to them afterwards and explain. I, I think most lecturers will be pleased that you've taken the trouble to, to tell them how they could perform better next time. It might be something as simple as, as projecting to the back of the room or it might be... Um, giving more examples. Some lecturers might be surprised that students go up to them. Maybe it's not happened before. But I think when they've had time to think about it, they'll welcome the chance to improve. So, um, yes, be brave and, uh, and, and tell the lecturer when you've not understood or, or when you want them to do something else. Often if there's a, a small group, perhaps, it might help. You might also ask for practical things, like a copy of the notes themselves. And that brings us to the end of this programme, in which Susan Fern focused on the final section of a lecture and on the role of the student. As we've heard, it's important for students to participate as active and critical listeners and to be prepared to ask questions. That was Talk About English from BBC Learning English.com.